hello. Welcome to the first DC Today of 2023. I am re literally right off of an airplane coming back from Dallas, Texas. Um, we're in the office. I'm actually in my own office in Newport Beach right now, not in the studio because our whole office, we have a whole new expansion um, opening tomorrow. And so uh, the area where the studio is, is being worked on as certain people are moving over to a new space and there's a lot of tech stuff moving around and this and that. And so it's kind of a weird chaotic day combined with, with my travel. And yet, nevertheless, there is a, a DC today and whatever chaos you think is going on uh, in our office and with the change and with the travel and with USC's depressing um, loss and all of those things, it pales in comparison to the chaos going on uh, right now as we speak on Capitol Hill, which is largely what DC Today is about um, today. Uh, I want to talk about what's going on in the House race. Um, the fact of the matter is that markets did start the year today with a pretty fair amount of volatility. You always kind of wonder coming off of a sort of quasi holiday break what uh, to expect in terms of reopening and traders being back at their desks and things like that, um, the, the end of tax loss selling and so forth. Um, the, the expectation that we were going to have a weird day in the markets was foreshadowed last night where futures opened up, up about 150 points and um, then went kind of flattish and then went down. And then this morning we're showing up 250 points. And so you, ju you just had a lot of movement um, it, it, it showing kind of a lack of direction. And then the market traded in a 550 point range today. It was up as much as 250 points on the Dow. It was down as much as 300 and it closed um, down 10 points. Now the S&P and the NASDAQ didn't fare quite so well, um, largely because you had two gigantic capitalization companies uh, that were down a great deal. A company called Tesla was down about 12% today and a company called Apple was down nearly 4%. And, and so, you know, the, those size of companies, that's going to change things in the indexes a bit. Um, but the bond market rallied today. The 10 year uh, yield was down eight basis points. So you got quite a bit higher in bond prices. And the um, Capitol Hill, quite, you know, activity that as I'm sitting here recording right now in the middle of the afternoon on Tuesday, January 3rd, I have no idea where it's going to go. And I don't know if we're going to know by 2.15 in the morning, let alone 2.15 in the afternoon. Um, the bid for Kevin McCarthy to become the Speaker of the House, Republicans obviously have a majority, but his inability to get the votes necessary from someone in his own party means that they can't get to the 218 majority needed. And uh, he failed on the first ballot, which was the first time it's happened in over 100 years. And then uh, as I'm sitting and recording now, they've now gone twice more. So there's now been three different ballots. And um, he's failed through all of those as well. So at some point, does somebody blink? Does a compromise come? Do they keep doing this for months? Do, do they accept a motion to vacate and delay? I mean, there's a few procedural things that could happen. But when something hasn't happened in over 100 years, people start reading their 1836 textbook on stuff. God knows what's going to happen. And um, I don't know that it's a huge impact in the markets right now, but it, it probably can't be helping. It certainly adds to a little uncertainty. But the main takeaway I wanted to share with you today in DC Today is that I've really racked my brain thinking about this today. I read a number of reports. I talked to two friends of mine on the Hill. I don't think, uh, regardless of how this gets worked out, I don't know how you can draw any conclusion than that the debt ceiling debate later in the year is going to be an absolute prime opportunity for a few of these folks on the Republican side to, to grandstand, but not just for the sake of a few days or a shutdown or whatnot, um, but potentially really holding out on, on that funding. Um, the way it works, just to so understand, is that Congress passes legislation to pass a budget, and they've done that. Anyone who doesn't like the budget doesn't have to vote for it. 
Um, but then there's a separate issue that is procedural, not legislative, about a, a debt limit. And the Congress has not passed a balanced budget amendment. So you can legislatively solve for debt limit anytime you want by saying you can't spend money you don't have. Congress refuses to do that. And Congress accepts budgets that don't do that. And, and, any, and people can argue all day long. In fact, I think most people would, by the way. That's what they need to do. We need to run deficits or whatever. I mean, I, I, I have so much I can say on this. I, I, I just don't want to waste your time right now because it's not really my point. Regardless of what one thinks should or should not be the size of government or our relationship with deficit spending or whether or not the deficits are the fault of the fact that our tax rates are too low or others who believe the spending is too high or whatever. There are different opinions on all that stuff, and I most certainly have my own, but that's not my point. My point is that Congress agrees to this. It gets passed legislatively, and then the debt ceiling becomes this procedural thing that's totally unrelated to legislation, and it provides an opportunity for a legislator to not have to legislate, and that's what my grievance with it is. But I guess that's my takeaway from a market standpoint on this stuff with Kevin McCarthy today. Whether one likes him as Speaker of the House or doesn't um, is not necessarily my point. There is, to me, pretty clear willingness that because of the weird margins by which the Republicans have a sort of majority, but where I'm going to guess somewhere between five and 20 of those people stand, I think that um, we should anticipate later in the year a debt ceiling debate that is different than something we've seen in the past. And um, I don't mean that in a positive way. And, and I also don't mean that because I like the idea of a permanently limited debt ceiling. I don't. I don't, I don't like excessive indebtedness. But the way to solve for excessive indebtedness is to spend less, which is the responsibility of Congress appropriates money and passes budgets. So this whole thing is kind of weird. And, and maybe after the SC game yesterday, I'm not in the mood for it. But I think it's market warranted, so I wanted to bring it up. I mentioned a couple of big stocks that were down today that hurt markets. Uh, energy was the worst performing sector on the day, but then communication services was the best performing. And actually, uh, as best I can tell, there's more positions that were up today than down. And so I think you, you had an okay day breadth-wise, but you just had a few larger size positions that brought down the other averages. I have so much I want to say about where we are in the market, the economy. Um, it's just that I wrote a 27-page white paper, um, over 9,000 words to do just that, and I don't really want to give it all away. That uh, paper will come out on Friday of this week. There will be extensive video and podcast to go with it. There's a lot more to say that I just won't say right here. But for now then today, that's the major story. Um, a lot of uh, escalations in, in Ukraine uh, over the weekend um, from the vantage point of those who are rooting for Ukraine, not Russia, uh, which I hope is still like a thing. Um, Ukraine had a successful weekend, but that ended up not becoming the major story in the political news cycle today along this drama playing out right now on, the, uh, on Capitol Hill. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, we don't have earnings season starting for a couple weeks. Um, you, uh, clients will receive a weekly portfolio report in the morning with the kind of end of the year summaries of a lot of different things. Uh, but that's our back to, uh, DC today edition here on Tuesday, January 3rd. I look forward to coming back at you tomorrow, Wednesday, the 4th. Have a wonderful evening. Reach out with any questions, questions at the Bonson group.com.